I'll wait. This is Mighty Avengers 31. And I didn't realise how close we are to the end of this run. And we are even closer to when the book stops having anything good about it. More on that when we get to the final two-parter. But for the time being, we have this gorgeous cover. This is more of that. Avengers Unlimited idea. It gets dropped after this issue. But this cover is amazing. I would say this is maybe the best cover of the run. But to be perfectly honest. The issue before this. And issue 26. They both have cracking covers too. The three of them I would throw out there as the best Avengers covers of the last however many years. This is by Dan Slott and Nokia Engage. And it is the only issue where it feels like co-writers instead of two writers. And we have this big group of Avengers and Avengers allies. They are fighting the big bad called the Unspoken. Half of the heroes have already fallen to him. And have been mutated by his magic gas. That transforms them into Alpha Prime Apes. And just to clarify... Down here, he still reminds readers that this is irreversible. The Flash and the Vision, they are two of the team who are not affected by the fog. The Flash can use his speed powers to create air currents to blow it away. And the Vision is an Andrew with density control. So, he isn't really subject to it. Everyone else has been transformed by it. Except for Rage, who the Flash saved by grabbing him and running away with him. I'd love if Rage turned out a contribute to the story after this. But he doesn't. We do have plenty of the Flash, though. And references to awful stories like Son of Muh. And the Flash realises that he is to blame for the Unspoken's current attack. Oh, by the way, to clarify, yeah, this does solve one of my points in an earlier issue. I said the Unspoken sitting around in Tibet for decades... It's silly, but they explain here that it was those bad stories that happened recently that sprung him into action. I think he was content in seclusion. Uh, the Flash isn't going to do anything else though, because Dan Slot wants to write. And so Aunt Gordon shows up to save the day. Down here is the credits. I am only showing them because they have finally credited Nokia Engage with his middle initial. So that name should make more sense. I like this bit with Ankh and Orkai. It is a nice reunion of the two. And as much as I want to pan this for our over the top it gans with validating and Gordon. It is not as bad as last issue. Last issue had the embodiment of the universe day. So anything is better than that. Hercules man has snuck off to destroy the unspoken's mothership thing. With him is 
Amadeus Cho, the superior oak, and he is trying to shut down the magic gas that is turning their friends into savages. Uh, this is back when Amadeus Cho was just the boy genius. He wasn't a superior oak yet. He was Hercules man's friend. He was Hercules man's kid sidekick. He was the brains to Hercules man's brawn. Current canon is probably that Hercules man was grooming Amadeus Cho for bum sex. One thing I can get behind, and this is a Dan Slot thing, and Gordon has a renewed sense of confidence. I just wish that it didn't come from the universe itself telling him that he is amazing. But I like this. This is the first real on-panel reference to... The character's mental health, sharing traits with actual mental health. He has his upswings and his downswings. He is manic depressive or he is bipolar. I think they went ahead and said the latter, but I have got the former, so... I prefer pretending that he is that. And right now he is feeling good about himself and productive. So he is able to be like the Avenger who saves the day. We have this bit with Giant Girl which feels a little bit forced. The problem at play here is that Giant Girl hasn't really done much in this side of the story so this scene with Orkai firing her on an arrow just like he did with her dad on the cover of Avengers 223 as nice a callback as this is it feels like they had to make room for this rather than worked it into the plot but by this point in the story, you definitely know that the stakes are a lot lower than the story has told you. Because nearly everybody except for the Flash, Radiation Man, the Vision, Giant Girl, a few others. Nearly everybody else has succumbed to the mist. But it is nice to see Radiation Man have one appearance after Thunderballs, where his characterization from that series isn't tossed aside to make him into a generic bad guy again. So, Aunt Gordon, he fights the unspoken while... Hercules man starts piloting the unspoken ship and we have a comedy bit with the Flash tricking the transformed us agent into attacking the bad guys by telling them that they are communists. This story really bothers me with how us agent was finally stepping up to contribute to a plot. And this is what became of his involvement. So the team of Avengers, they are able to defeat the Unspoken together. And everything is restored to normal. The irreversible process is reversed. And we have some more clunky dance slot validating Aunt Gordon again. Between this page and this page here, that Unhumans miniseries takes place. 
I have already reviewed it. And I will cover this good stuff with Flash and his daughter and some actual repercussions for his actions in awful stories. I will talk about this next issue since they continue it at the start of that. This was Mighty Avengers 31, the final part of a story arc which was... A confused mess, really, but it had its charm in places. I am surprised how much I liked the final part here. I thought I was building up to it and it, but this was decent. Oh God, what if, what if I have been wrong all along, and it is Dan Slot? Who I love as a writer. And Nokia Engage is the weak link. Oh no way, Dan Slott writes the final two issues of this series all by himself. And they are bad. Seven thumbs up for this one though.